Hi, beautiful friends and bookish fam. My name is Brittany. This is Buskies and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today for the final Bookmas video. We did it, y'all. And today we are celebrating with the Christmas Carol book tag. Well, we have come to the end of our Bookmas journey. I am here today in my favorite Christmas sweater. It is, of course, my diehard Christmas sweater. Yes, it does say yippee ki -yay, motherfucker. Of course, Die Hard is a Christmas movie. You cannot change my mind about that. I want to say thank you to everybody who continuously watched my Bookmas videos. I cannot even tell you how much I appreciate it. Bookmas is definitely a labor of love. I always love participating in it, but it is definitely a chaotic time. There's so much planning and filming and editing that's involved. So I very much appreciate all of you who took the time to watch and comment on my Bookmas video. And please feel free to let me know if you want me to do this again next year. And if so, if there are any videos that you hope to see return next year or any new videos that you would hope to see me film, I always appreciate your feedback. And of course, it helps when you give me video ideas. But anyway, like I said, today we are ending Bookmas with a fun Christmas tag. I did the same thing last year and I think I'm going to try to make it a tradition as long as I can continue to find Christmas related book tags. Like I said, today we are doing the Christmas Carol book tag. This, as may seem obvious, is based around the Christmas classic Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. Dickens. This tag was originally created by Lauren Wade on booktube. I will be sure to leave the original tag video down below so that you can check it out. And we are going to go ahead and just jump right into the tag. Question number one, The Ghost of Christmas Past, a book that was a childhood favorite. And I think that I'm going to have to go with Harry Potter for this one, y'all. I know that it's a pretty standard answer to a question like this. However, I feel particularly entitled to give this as an answer because I was literally a child when these books came out. So I was actually growing up with Harry and Hermione as they were growing up. The book came out when I was about nine years old and I discovered them if I remember correctly when I was 11. So by the time I had discovered them the first three books were out and I discovered them quite by accident and I actually really loved the story because it was a happy accident that led me to discovering one of the most influential book series of my entire life. Something that has played such a huge role in my life. Something that has influenced me tremendously and has caused me a lot of emotions and has such great lessons to teach everybody and that's really why I wanted to have it as an answer to this question because I was an actual child when Harry Potter came out, I was just so grateful for those stories when I was younger. And to be quite honest, even though I was a voracious reader when I was younger, there are not a lot of books that I remember from my early childhood days. So I don't even know if I can name a book that I read before I discovered Harry Potter. Oh, wait a minute. I actually do have an answer to this question and it's probably going to be an unusual one, but there was a book called They Cage the Animals at Night by Jennings Birch. If I remember correctly, this was read to me when I was a child in class. I think the memories are fuzzy. I honestly do not know how I discovered this book, but I know that I read it when I was a young child. But this was a novel all about the horrific childhood of Jennings Birch. It's very much reminiscent of A Child Called It. So if you have read that book, you will kind of know what I'm talking about with this story. I remember being told that story and it just sticking with me for so long. And in fact, I remember going in search of it when I was older because I wanted to reread it. But yeah, I do know that I discovered that when I was very, very young and it very much had an impact on me for sure. Question number two is The Ghost of Christmas Present, a recent book that you think will become one of your all-time favorites. I have a lot of answers to this, y'all, because I have read some pretty phenomenal books this year, a lot of them within the past couple of months that I've really, really enjoyed. But the ones lately that I cannot seem to shut up about, The Unmaking of June Barrow by Adrienne Young, Starling House by Alexi Harrow, and Wayward by Amelia Hart. Like I just said, I cannot shut up about these books. So these have been mentioned in multiple videos, even in multiple bookmas videos. So I'm not going to talk about these books anymore, but these certainly are going to be with me for a very, very long time. Question number three is The Ghost of Christmas Yet to Come, a book coming out next year that you are most excited about. So there are actually quite a lot of books coming out next year that I'm extremely excited about. I recently just posted a video of all of my most anticipated releases so far coming out in 2024. The ones that I can think of for sure off the top of my head are the newest one by Abby Jimenez. Y'all know how I feel about her. She is certainly an autobi author. I think she is a premier romance author and I just know that I'm going to love this. Emily Henry's newest release is also coming out. It's called Funny Story. I'm really intrigued by the premise of that one. I, of course, am also very excited for Riley Sager's newest release, which is coming out in June as always. And of course, the next book in the Crescent City series by Sarah J. Mass. There are a lot of phenomenal books that are coming out early next year in the first half of the year that I'm very, very hyped for. Question number four is Bah Humbug, a book that everyone loves that you just cannot stand. Okay, so I have a couple of true answers for this in that these books are really well loved, but I cannot stand them. But I also have a couple honorable mentions for books that are deeply loved. And these aren't books that I hate. They are books that I don't necessarily 
necessarily understand the love for and I had a lot of issues with. So first let's go ahead with the two that I cannot stand that everybody loves. Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney. I read this late last year and it became one of the worst books that I ever read in 2022. Absolutely cannot stand this story at all. It was highly predictable for the most part. I could not stand the writing style of the story. All of the little life lessons that Alice Feeney felt was necessary to throw in unnecessarily. This book just really aggravates me. Final Girls by Riley Sager. I still think that this is consistently touted as a lot of people's favorite Riley Sagers. This was the very first Riley Sager that I ever read and I gave it a two stars. I went on a massive rages and rants about this story when I read it and it is truly a miracle that I decided to continue with him as an author after I read this story. Even four years later after having read this story I'm still angry about it but of course I really liked and enjoyed most of his other works and I've never actually hated one as much as I hated this one. That just goes to show you how much I think he has improved as an author but yes this is one that seems to consistently get a lot of high praise that I do not love. Now let's talk about my two honorable mentions starting with Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. This was my very first experience with Gabrielle Zevin and first I need to say that her writing is absolutely stunning. I really loved the writing in this story overall and I was really intrigued by the premise because this is overall a story about a friendship and the complications that can come from a lifelong friendship but one of the main characters in this, Sadie, I could not stand. In fact she was probably one of my least favorite characters that I ever read from in 2023 and I read this early in 2023 so there were a lot of characters that came after her. She just almost completely ruined the story for me and I don't like the direction that Gabrielle Zevin took this story. I had a lot of technical issues with it. I'm pretty sure that I probably did a review on Goodreads talking about all my issues with it so I'm not going to go into that here. This I see almost nothing but positive reviews for like everybody absolutely loves the story and dies over it and I'm just over here thinking like how could you get over Sadie? Like she was awful. So this is one honorable mention and the next one that I want to talk about is Love in Other Words by Christina Lauren. So that is probably one of Christina Lauren's books that gets the most praise. It's absolutely everybody's favorite Christina Lauren. I read that directly after reading Every Summer After. The storylines for those are very similar. The overall concept is pretty much the same and I was hearing a lot of people say how much they hated Every Summer After because it was basically a ripoff of Love in Other Words. So I was nervous going into Love in Other Words but first of all I think the stories are different enough that you can easily differentiate them but also in my opinion Every Summer After was far superior in a lot of ways. The writing style. The writing was just overall better. It was more detailed. It was more complex. You were able to fully connect emotionally with the characters much more than Love in Other Words which I feel was very very superficial overall and that's just Christina Lauren. Their books for the most part are fluff and you don't really get a lot of depth to their story even though there was something very tragic that happened at the end of the story it still was not enough to like overall raise my opinion overall. I just felt like Every Summer After was far superior because I just thought that it was way better written in my opinion. Question number five Bob Cratchit an old dependable that you always recommend. I'm just gonna hold this up here and let you admire it for a second. Y'all just need to read it if you haven't already just do it. Question number six Tiny Tim an underhyped book that you feel deserves more love. So I have three that I was able to kind of think of off the top of my head so I'm gonna briefly go over all of them. The first is one that I've mentioned again in multiple videos but I hear like nobody else talk about it so I'm going to talk about it a lot. The Collective Regrets of Clover by Mickey Bremer. This is one of the best books that I read this year and it completely caught me by surprise and blew me out of the water. This is a beautiful character study of Clover who is a death doula and what it means when she goes out and basically lives her life for the first time. I like I said don't hear anybody talk about this and I feel like more people need to read it. A Solitude of Wolverines by Alice Henderson. I discovered Alice Henderson last year. I read this and it instantly became one of my favorite wintry thrillers of all time. It follows a wildlife biologist named Dr. Alex Carter and what happens to her when she's out trying to do conservation efforts and people do not want her to do these so her life is in danger and it kind of follows the same trajectory in the second book of Blizzard of Polar Bears. I don't think I've heard any other booktuber read this or anybody talk about these books and they are solid thrillers y'all. Now I know Alice Henderson has wrote a bunch of other miscellaneous things in the past. I have no idea whether she's going to continue in this series after the fourth book is released. I have no idea if she's going to write any other thrillers. No idea whatsoever but all I can tell you is that the Dr. Alex Carter series is by far worth the read if you love a good thriller especially if you love a good wintry isolation thriller. The first two will definitely fit the bill. And this next one is actually an older book so I can understand why it might not be talked about frequently now but I don't remember it being talked about frequently even when it first came out and so this is one that I always recommend when people want an underhyped book. The Roanoke Girls by Amy Engel. The quickest way I could describe this is a southern gothic nightmare. This is a deeply atmospheric gothic mystery that has some very deeply disturbing things happen in here so please be warned look up content warnings. Y'all know that I love my mysteries and thrillers deeply dark and disturbing and that was absolutely this one so if you're looking for that highly recommend. Question seven. Today why it's Christmas day. What's a book that always gets you in the mood for Christmas? So I actually don't really have a book that gets me in the mood for Christmas. I'm not a really big rereader and I don't read a ton of Christmas related stories but I will go ahead and just talk about a movie really quick in replacement. The one movie that I have to watch every single Christmas day it is a tradition. It's something that I've loved ever since I was a child and it's not Christmas until I've watched this movie. It's a Christmas story. I'm sure that y'all know exactly what this movie is about so I don't have to go into too much detail 
still, but I have just absolutely adored this movie ever since I was a child and I make sure to watch it every single Christmas day. Not a Christmas day goes by, no matter what I'm doing or where I am, that I am not watching this movie or at least having it on in the background because this is the epitome of Christmas to me. There's something so incredibly wholesome and atmospheric about this story, which is set in the 1940s and I absolutely adore it. A Christmas story is definitely always the Christmas related story that gets me in the mood for Christmas. Question number eight, The Muppet Christmas Carol. Your favorite film adaptation of a book? The one that comes to mind off the top of my head is probably The Hunger Games. I remember enjoying The Hunger Games movies way more than I enjoyed the books. I thought that they were very, very well done. I also really enjoyed the television adaptation of Firefly Lane by Kristen Hanna. Now I actually still have to watch the last few episodes. They split season two into two parts and I haven't watched those episodes, but I do know that based on how part one ended, that they are now very much going back towards how it originally ended in the first book. And so my heart is going to break. And I think that's probably why I'm procrastinating on it. The television adaptation is very, very different from the book in terms of there's a lot of things that happen in the adaptation that don't actually happen in the book. But the main thing that remains the same is that this is ultimately the story of a lifelong friendship between Tully and Kate, the ups and downs, the complications, the trials, the love, the happiness, the joys, all of it. And I felt like the TV series did a fantastic job of bringing all that to life. And they really encompassed the meaning and the message and the vibe of Tully and Kate in their friendship. Those would probably be the two offhand that I would say are my favorites. And then the very last and final question is of course, tag some people. Now this tag is fairly old. It was made in 2019. So I have no idea who's done it and who has not. So I'll just go ahead and ramble off a few people. If they've done it, great, please ignore. If you haven't, please feel free to do. Of course, I'm going to tag my new booktube best friend, which is Brittany Rand. She doesn't know yet that she's my new booktube best friend, but she is. So congratulations. <laughs> I'm also going to tag Aoife from Pretty Purple Polka Dots, Victoria from What Victoria Read, as well as Brianna from Four Paws in a Book. I would love to see all of you do this tag if you have not already. All right, everybody. And that does it. That is the conclusion to Book Miss. Thank you again so much for coming with me on this journey. I hope that you enjoyed. And if you celebrate Christmas or if you're celebrating any other holiday this season, I hope that your holiday season is filled with love, laughter, warmth, that you feel safe and that you feel loved and cared about and that you are blessed beyond measure. Please comment down below and let me know your answer to the Bah Humbug question, a book that everybody loves that you just cannot stand. I would love to know your answers to this. Or if you made it to the end of this video and you're not feeling chatty, but you want to let me know that you were here, go ahead and of course, leave me some type of Christmas emoji, a Christmas tree, a Christmas present, Christmas lights, Christmas anything. Please go ahead and leave that down below. You all know that I love seeing your comments. The engagement means the world to me and it certainly helps me and my channel. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I aim to post one video a week, sometimes two, depending on what I can do. And I would sure love to see you in one of those next videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which I always leave linked down below along with any of the books that I may have mentioned in the video. Until next time, guys. Bye.